So there is this tweet from a software developer that went somewhat viral today about a default extension in the Google Chrome browser that appears to be related to the now dead for almost two years Google Hangouts service. This Hangout extension cannot be disabled in the Google Chrome browser and it doesn't even show up in the extensions panel in the browser. And the extension is only able to connect to google.com domains over HTTPS, so in theory, it's something that can really only connect back to Google. And one of the APIs that this extension is using is system.cpu which as we can see in the Chrome developer documents, this API allows you to fully fingerprint the CPU of the device and get statistics about CPU, GPU, and RAM usage of the system in real time. And because this is a default, unremovable extension in Google Chrome, there is no official request that is made to the user in order to allow the extension to have access to the system.cpu API like we would see with every other Chrome extension that would request access to this API or any other sensitive browser API. Now, if you are familiar with the Google Hangout service, it was one of the first web apps that allowed you to do video calling in the browser with WebRTC. In 2017, when Google began developing Google Meet, Google Hangouts was officially put into Google's application death row until it was completely discontinued in 2022. Now, even though the Google Hangouts service is dead, a lot of its code still made its way into Google Meet. And of course that code has been changed and refactored over time. Uh, and of course, unlike in 2017, these days there's a whole slew of in-browser video calling applications that the end user has to choose from. And this fact is the reason why this piece of code that exists in the Google Chrome browser might be a problem for Google. You probably know about the EU's DMA laws that have caused pretty much every big tech company to make major changes to their products and platforms that give users more freedoms and also make these products and platforms less locked down and this is a requirement that the companies have to comply with in order to keep their products and platforms available in the EU. The large digital platform providers, or gatekeepers as the EU calls them, are not allowed to do things like give their products a favorable advantage in their platforms. So for example, Microsoft isn't allowed to expose specific APIs in Windows to just Microsoft Edge in order to make it function as a better browser and do things that Chrome, Firefox, or other browsers just have no way of doing. So in this case here, Google could be seen in violation because presumably Google Meet still has access to this extension since the extension is only able to connect to google.com. But Zoom, Skype, or any other video chat program can't access those statistics about your CPU, GPU, and RAM in order for them to improve their products. And since this extension can't be uninstalled by the end user, it could also be seen in violation to the rule about preventing users from uninstalling any pre-installed software or app if they wish to do so. The only way you really could remove this extension in Chrome now would be to change the source code of Chrome and then compile it yourself like the ungoogled Chromium devs have done. 
Now, I've seen some people alluding to the idea that this hidden extension is some kind of secret spyware that Google has baked into the Chrome browser to just allow them to spy on people. And I don't think that this is entirely accurate because for one, the Google Chrome browser is already spyware by itself. Like Google tracks everything that you're doing across the web, wherever it's possible, even if you're not using the Chrome browser, if you're signed into Google and doing stuff within their platforms like YouTube, Google, etc., then they're tracking everything you do. And they do this to funnel their targeted advertising. That's pretty much their whole business model. So since Google is already tracking your search history, YouTube watch history, and reading your emails if you're using Gmail, then I don't think they have that much more to gain by fingerprinting your CPU and then tracking your device's resource usage over time. But something like this is still a really bad look for Google. I mean, if you just read the Twitter thread and see what most people are saying about it, they're not too happy about this. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see this Hangouts extension just get removed completely in an update to Google Chrome. Because best case scenario, if this extension really is a nothing burger, like if it's just dead code that not even Google Meet is using to this day, then this extension is just bloat in the Chrome browser, which is already pretty bloated. So, you know, this is some bloat that Google could remove and maybe make it just a little teensy bit faster. And if this is actively being used by Google Meet in order to collect device usage statistics for improving the app or anything else, then I really do think that the argument of this being a DMA violation can be made and then Google might be forced to remove it in order to avoid getting fined by the EU. But in the meantime, the best way to avoid this very strange browser extension would be to stop using Chromium-based browsers, especially the original Google Chrome browser that has all of Google spyware baked into it. Now, some forks of Chromium do seem to be okay, like un-Google Chromium, which is compiled with the Hangouts extension disabled, but I'm not aware of any other Chromium-based web browsers that do have this extension disabled by default. Microsoft Edge has the Google Hangouts extension enabled, and it's the same situation as Chrome, where there's no easy option for the end user to disable the extension. And the Brave browser also has this Hangouts extension enabled by default, but you can drill down into the extension settings in the browser and disable it that way. They could independently remove this functionality if they really wanted to. You know, I've seen a lot of people concerned that the Brave browser specifically seems to have this since that's supposed to be a fairly private browser. And of course, it wouldn't make much sense for a privacy-based browser to give that special access to Google. And now that I think about it, it also doesn't make that much sense for Microsoft Edge to give that access to Google, especially when they have their own video conferencing software that is meant to compete with Google Meet. And of course, our favorite browser, Firefox and its forks, don't have this strange piece of Hangouts code in them either. So as always, the best way to avoid Chrome spyware altogether is to switch to one of the few browsers in the future that are not Chrome. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store based.win where you can get awesome merch like the come and find it or Libre t-shirts and save 10% store wide at checkout whenever you pay in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.